Okay, and welcome back. We're on uh, the epilogue now, tying up some loose ends. The mission's called Healthy Carrier. Find a way to enter the castle, it says. Lovely, vampiric looking, whatever, castle. And the reason we're going there is because I think that's where uh, Vampire Elizabeth is. And we found out that, uh, well, that's the chick, by the way, that the game has made our guy fall in love with, like, within two or so days. But, uh, it turns out her blood is probably tainted because she, it was her blood that caused those ladies to turn into monsters. So, of course the gate's locked. I cannot enter. Yeah. The castle walls look decrepit. Hmm. Maybe I can find a way to sneak in. Yes. Now, you'd think as a vampire I could climb this little wall, but no. Looks like we're gonna have to go exploring a bit. this wonderful idea of yours concerning the foundation of an orphanage for young ladies, inspired by the French Maison Royale de Saint Louis, sadly closed when the French people chose, my god, I can't even write these words down, to cut their king's head off. Such a place, destined to provide a good education to gifted but poor orphan girls, will surely excite my friends here in the city. You can count on me and my influence to help make your project a huge success. Yours ever sincerely, Countess Alexandra Somerset. Okie dokie. Okay, there's where we came in. This is where we're going. I should do a scan. Any bodies? Uh, nothing's coming up. Portrait of Elizabeth. Okay, this must be her family home. Ashbury Castle, 21 September 1795. Dear Mr. McAllister, as the new legal owner of the Ashbury estate, I intend to quickly engage in the overdue maintenance and repairs of the walls and the crypt of the castle. Among the few architects I invited to send forth proposals, I was most impressed by your respectful approach concerning renovations on historical buildings and their preservation. 
I would be glad to meet you at your convenience. My only request would be to speak to you directly and not your assistance. Any evening of next month would be agreeable. You may come to the castle or I can meet you at your office as you prefer. If you agree to come to the castle, I could show you what kind of repairs and modifications I have in mind concerning the crypt, which may need considerable work and reconstruction. Very sincerely, Lady Ashbury. Like most castles, this one has a crypt. And it holds something special inside. Lady Ashbury must sleep in a crypt. How very vampire. This castle is falling apart. site to supervise the installation of the locks and security measures you have requested. I also can assure you that my men have been briefed about never entering the crypt itself or the second floor of the castle. I must say I'm proud to continue and enhance the work started by my great-grandfather when employed by your ancestor in 1795. Very sincerely, Angus McAllister. Yeah, her ancestor. It's like, no, actually, that's... It's just her. Anything in here? No. Ashes, I would suppose. Another picture. Oh. Recent letter. Dunborough Sanitar Sanatorium, Scotland. 27 July 1909. Dear Lady Ashbury, I thank you for your previous letters and ardent discussion about vampire folklore. It's now obvious we share an, op an opinion concerning scientific and modern approach towards the need for blood and the cure of addiction. I must confess I admired your charitable attitude when I met you at the Dunbarrow Sanatorium, and I'm still impressed by your kindness when talking with humble and poor patients. I was delighted to read about the position of administrator at the Pembroke Hospital. You finance since its founding. After a few days of deliberation, I'm happy to accept your offer. It will be, for me, an occasion to get back to the busy streets of London after years of public service in the beautiful but far quieter Scotland. I will be glad to meet you there and discuss with you further about immortality, its advantages and disadvantages, and how to enhance your condition. I look forward to our next meeting. Yours sincerely, Dr. Edgar Swansea. Well, the plot thickens. Everybody knows everybody. Well, oh, actually, they already knew they had. There's some rats. Anybody else? This painting is suspicious. What painting? Oh, this one. Sword and a moon are the symbols I should look for. Ah, oh, great. A puzzle. Sword and a moon are things I should look for. We going in here? Whoa, does this lead to the basement where she, uh, the crypt? Nope. Okay, any sword and moons in here? Let's see. There, there, we got another door. Let's go check it out. And go, very nice. It's not a sword or a moon, however. Wait. What are these symbols? I can feel a mechanism, but it doesn't work. There's a sword. One last switch. Oh, come on. 
come on. It's gonna be in another room or something. Let's just double check. Yeah, we've already pressed that one. I'm not pressing that one because it is looks like fire or a flower. Alright. Oh, wait, there's more. There's the moon. Voila. Now what opened? It's got to be in the big fireplace. Yeah. There we go. Alright, we want to meet Lady Ashbury. I don't know how this is going to play out. Ancient Tome, 1217. An angel came to me, blessed be to God. Michael appeared to me last night in all his glory, shaped in glorious blood, to grant me eternal life at the dusk of my life. The apparition was so sublime and terrible that I could not help but lower my head and close my eyes. Struck by the divine gift, I fell to the ground, only to awake the next night. You will serve me as you served your kings, said the angel before striking me with all his power. You will protect this land through the eons to come. For all who knew me, I should now hide and retreat, for they consider me dead. Soon I will leave the company of men to serve my new purpose. Blessed be God. 1350. Michael appeared to me last night in my retreat under Temple Church and asked me to prepare for battle. The land must be saved. Death is everywhere. The Black Death. An epidemic sent by the devil himself to punish mortals all over the world. My arm is strong. In the name of God, I shall smite the enemies of mankind. England shall prevail. 1569. It is almost twenty years since my fight started against the devil, and the end is uncertain. From time to time, the plague, the Black Death, reappears in a village, in a town, and each time, the vicious minions of hell approach to get their share of the mortal suffering. Vampires, dreadful creatures, I won't let this land collapse. Until my last breath, I'll serve and protect England. 1578. Tonight, in the small village of Hottestun, I met the most delicate soul I've seen for a long time. She was singing for the dead, singing for those she knew and loved, those killed by a new plague outbreak, without fearing for her own life. Her voice moved me, so I choose to let her live. I offered her eternal life as a reward for her virtue and most pious attitude. Her name is Elizabeth Inglewood. I'm not alone anymore. Together we shall praise God in all his glory for the eons to come. 1618. My heart is breaking. My soul is bleeding. Tonight, my dear Elizabeth left me. I have taught her all I knew, all she needed to know. Now she must walk her own path through the ages. This is her wish, and I will respect it. Elizabeth Inglewood, my sweet daughter, is gone, for she, for she now wants to be known as Elizabeth Blackwood. I made her a promise. If she ever comes back to Hottiston, she will find me there managing the bull in her parents' own before dying. William Marshall shall disappear for a few times, too, now that the Black Death is no more. Until we meet again, I shall be known as William Thorne, waiting for my angel to come back. 1665. The devil is at work again. The Great Plague is back, reaping thousands of lives in London. I must sell the bull in and go there. Once more, William Marshall shall protect the land. 1666. That was weird. What have I done? I let the devil infect me. God forgive me. The terrifying creature I had to defeat was a demon straight from hell, an abomination of the flesh, a walking apocalypse. I had to trap the dreadful creature in St. Paul's Church and set the building on fire. Without the advice of Michael, I don't know if I could have defeated my enemy. The flames cleansed the city of the demon's presence, but half of London burnt down. Ever since, I have dreamt of a red flood, of slaughter and rage. It's like the disaster had tainted my blood, my very soul. For the first time in centuries, I am afraid. I shall crawl back to my retreat and pray to God for mercy for my infected soul. 1667. Elizabeth came to me. She said she felt my pain and rushed to save me. My poor daughter, blinded by rage, intoxicated by the blood of hate, I bit her. She fled, shocked by my betrayal. I laughed and cried as she cursed me. God, have I betrayed you? Have you abandoned me? 1712. My prayers have been heard. 
I have found the strength to resist the need for blood, the never-ending hunger. My poor Elizabeth, will you ever forgive me? I have heard you now kill and take pleasure in bloodbath with this new progeny of yours. You are a victim in all this. What have I done? I swear I will find a way to make amends for what I have done to you. I swear I shall only rest once I know how to appease the blood of hate. 1785. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll finally agreed to meet me in London. They proposed to meet inside the new Cathedral of St. Paul. I liked the wit and solemn solemnity of these men. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster, but also the place where I fell. I agreed to their proposition. There in the sacred silence of church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature, the disaster, the eater of stars, who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate promised to come back to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back to me with just a name, the Tear of Angels. According to him, this ancient artifact could heal anything, cleanse any blackened soul, and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord. It took me more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood of hate, but I may finally have found it. Soon the rage shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary ingredients to create the artifact. Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of a king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me the most, for time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote, but if that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, I am ready to endure this excruciating pain. 1786. I finally managed to gather all the ingredients needed to concoct the tear of angels. Blood of the purest heart for the fortitude, blood of a king for courage, garlic essence for the painful cleansing. After months of impatience, Almost made mad by the hunger, I waited again and again, until finally Elizabeth cautiously came to me. As promised, I had chained myself to be sure I would not attack her again. I did not recognize my sweet daughter at first, for she only was Lady Blackwood now, the dreadful mistress of the dark who took delight in slaughter and carnage in France. She smirked as I apologized and cried for what I inflicted to her. She shouted at me when I tried to explain that my bite had infected her and given her the blood of hate now burning in her veins, in her soul. I told her I had found a cure and that I had managed to create one dose of antidote. I gave it to her to give her back her previous peaceful life. In exchange, I only asked her to take care of me, for I intended to be locked down on my tomb, chained if necessary, to impeach me from feeding on any mortal or immortal. She reluctantly took the tear of angels and left. I hope to see her again soon, cured and at peace. 1794. She came back to me finally, cured, healthy, joyful. My Elizabeth. She told me she had drunk the antidote about a year ago in France after witnessing and taking part in the massacre of an entire orphanage caused by the blood of hate. That's when the Lady Blackwood died, she said. She promised she would take care of me now, that all I ask is I repent for all the murdered souls caused by my negligence of more than a hundred years. 1795. My dearest daughter came back last week to tell me the good news. She has recently bought a castle in Scotland. She will soon finance the renovation of the castle crypt to provide me a new retreat. Far from temptation, far from the noisy, crowded cities, I can't wait to embrace the solitude, find the peace. I need to refrain from killing. God, please give me the strength to resist the urges during the journey from London to my new domain. Before I leave, I should give a copy of these memoirs to the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll. Without the most shameful and sensible information, of course. Soon I shall leave London and pursue my penance. There I shall find peace at last with the support of my resuscitated Elizabeth. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Okay, let's look for Lady Ashbury. Nothing's coming up yet on our scan. Let's keep on heading down, down, down. Yet. So 
this is like a place where you'd find traps and stuff, but so far nothing. Drop your stuff. You have nothing to be afraid of. Shall we abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You told me that. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? Smite it? No, Father. He is a friend. Please, rest. I'll take care of it. Gaution, Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I know, Father. What took you so long, Jonathan? Um, Is this a sword? Is it really him? Yes. This is William Marshall, first Earl of Pembroke, servant of five mortal kings, former regent and savior of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Doctor. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury Estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I... Take care of my father, ever since he became unwell. Are you not afraid someone might discover you here? It's not that hard to find. Do not assume that I would hesitate to silence anyone who tried to reveal my secret. Fortunately, it has rarely come to that. Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes. To end it, once and for all. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who's about to come into money. I took care of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover, in time. The city has suffered, but it will prevail in the end. A more cynical analysis would be that this is an acceptable catastrophe. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this, through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation and the will of a creature so inexplicably evil she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. Well, I already know that. Because I read it. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. He gave you the antidote? Yes. 
And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was, and still is. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty Ekon, who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire, driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But, you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. How do you know? The antidote would not work on him. You could always try. I tried. Oh. Believe me, I tried. Never mind. William Marshall infected you. He is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The tears of angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate. But my father's antidote cured me. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury. And that's all I wish to be. All right. I understand. And I respect your desire for proof. Thank you, Jonathan. So now I'm gonna ask you more questions. <laughs> How did you meet William Marshall? He was an echo for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse. Forgetting the danger as you turned your back, like the newborn fool you were. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. So, William, my God, you really are William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. 
Come closer if you want to speak. For my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine, sir. What is it you want, then? I found your research on the antidote. The tears of the angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. King Richard and Bodicea? How did you find such relics? It took me many years to locate their hiding place. Then I had to learn the formula. If I recall, it belonged to an ancient brotherhood. The Order of St. Paul, I believe. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. I found and defeated the disaster that was threatening to smite London. You should know that the city is safe for now, Sir William. Then may I call you brother? Did you resist its poison? Even a scratch from a beast so evil could endanger you and all those you care for. You also defeated one in 1666. Who was it? She was a malicious witch who spread plague throughout the city with her army of rats. She had been hiding in a bakery in Pudding Lane for months when I finally found her. How did you defeat it? We fought for hours. In the end, I had to lock her in St. Paul's Cathedral and burn the building down. I wanted to be sure she was destroyed. I would do it. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly. Swift and implacable. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and godforsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once, but she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden, Michael, is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. Tell me about Elizabeth. 
How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I returned to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. Where is this retreat you mentioned? In London, under Temple Church, beneath my empty tomb. I always loved to sleep there while listening to the bell above. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees, begging for forgiveness. I swore I would find a way to make things right. Okay, we already, already read that in the book. So yeah, let's just go we straight We could set to you free, let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Sounds like she's gonna kill him. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time? You already are the sky. And all its stars. I'm not defeated. For I welcome the sword you bear. For it is mine. You were never defeated. My lord. <gasps> Farewell, father. <laughs> and to you also, Jonathan. What do you mean? I can't stand what I've become. This healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No! I won't allow this to happen. I am death, Jonathan. Wherever I go, I can't stand it. Who cares? We are vampires. We are death. No, Jonathan. I won't bring another disaster into this world. I can't lose you, Elizabeth. Even if it means putting the whole world at risk. How can you say such an awful thing? Where is the Jonathan I once saved from a scowl in this abandoned factory? I'm not that frightened man anymore. I've learned so much. Done so much. I see. So there is nothing worth living for in this world anymore. Damn. Farewell, my love. Farewell. One prayer for the summoned, called by this song. Child born from darkness, whose path he must find. 
Now the song is sung and your path chosen. England is safe, the price paid most dear. But what do you care? You are the one who keeps killing. You've chosen your path, my fallen champion, like others before you. Prey to lust and desire, slave to the everlasting thirst. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber. Until, alas, she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. Okay. I don't know if that would be considered a good or bad ending, but, uh... We ate some people on the way through, so... I guess that ending matched everything. Alright, well that was fun. Kind of wondering about playing it through once without, uh, or trying to play it through without doing any killing. That would be difficult. But, uh, who knows. Anyway, fun game. Thanks for watching and hanging out, and, um, as always, have a good night.